Welcome to the Prumihimo YouTube channel in lockdown. This is where I show you a few little tricks and tips done in an informal chatty style all in one take. And what I want to show today is how you can rectify quite a common mistake, which is, whoops, missing a bead here as well. So if you make a mistake and you notice it straight away while you're braiding, it's obviously best to go back and pop that bead in. But so often you get carried away with the enjoyment of the braiding and it's only when you get your braid off the disc that you find there's a mistake. But there's a very simple way of sorting this out using a needle and thread and of course your beads. And I'm gonna show you that now. So, I'm using quite large beads here to show you. These are size six beads, and so this is therefore quite a large bead line, a needle. I'm using a darning needle, and um, I'm using some beading cord, the slightly thinner one, which is the Tex 135. But if you've got uh, a braid made using size eight beads or size 11 beads, you will definitely need a beading needle and um, probably a beading thread of about, about a sixth pound beading thread. So, what you do first of all, you need to secure your thread in the braid. And the great thing about Kumihimo is hidden within these beads are textiles, are your cords. So it's quite easy to bury your thread in the braid. And what you do is, so this is where I want to put my bead. I want to bury my thread a little bit further away. So I'm just going to pass through the braid with my needle. Now, if you come... Sometimes it'll be easy like that. Sometimes you'll come to a dead end because you're, you're, the end of your needle is against a bead. So just take it back and try again. So this is my first pass through. I'm going to leave a little tail, just enough for myself to grip at the end, as you'll see. And then I'm going to pass back through, trying to catch a thread as I go. And wiggle it till I get through like that. And I'm going to just pull gently so that that loop there disappears. Now, you need to check that it has disappeared. Sometimes it might get caught round a bead, in which case you just use your needle to push it off the bead. You don't want anything visible. And I now need to sew through here several times in slightly different places in exactly the same way. Again, just making sure my thread disappears and through again until I'm happy that that thread is really firmly caught in the braid and won't go anywhere. So I guess four, five, six, whatever you're happy with. Don't pull the thread so tightly that you distort the braid. That's what you need to watch out for. Now that I'm happy that my thread is caught, I'm going to go to where I need to add the bead and I need to come out just here, just above where I want my bead to sit. So that might take me several stitches through. Again, I'm just wiggling it through to get it. See, sometimes, as I say, you just hit a bead, it's a bit more difficult. You just try again. So I'm just working my way through the braid little stitches, they're all completely invisible as long as you make sure that they're not getting caught on the outside. And a couple more goes through and I'll be there. And all these stitches are making sure that thread is really firmly in place. So now I'm coming out just at the top of that hole. Now, there we go, just pulled that tight. Now, when you put your bead in, do make sure you get the orientation of it right, of course. All these beads have got the um, holes in this, this same direction. So obviously you wouldn't want to put it in like that. You want to put it in like that. So my thread is coming out at the top of the hole. I'm now going to go through to the bottom of the hole and pop it into position. And I'm just gonna make sure that thread goes down want anything to show. There we go. And now I come up again from the other side. This is where it gets difficult. You might actually not be able to see which bead you're using. 
To make it easier for myself, I'm using a slightly different colour thread to the one, but you should try and use one that's exactly the same. This just helps me to see which bead um, I'm demonstrating with. So now I've come out again at the top of the stitch, at the top of the bead, I go through, and I go through again. There we go. That's pretty invisible, isn't it? And now, you, if, you're, if your thread's quite thin, you might want to go through a few more times. I'm happy that looks about right. So now I'm just going to finish off my thread in the same way as I did before. Just running through a few times. To finish it off. Might, do, might have done a couple more than that. But there we go. And now... I need to remove my threads. So the way to do this is to take your cord or thread, pull it really hard and put the scissors really close to the beads. Then snip. And as the tension is released, you can wiggle the braid a bit and the end of the, the cord will retreat into the braid. So again here, I'm going to pull hard, snip, and it's gone. So there we go. An invisible repair. I hope you found that useful and I hope you'll join me in the future for other simple tricks and tips like that that can really make a difference. You'll also find lots of interesting things on my website prumihimo.com so do have a look there as well. So until next time, goodbye.